I'm Lindsay Albertson, Assistant Professor at Montana State University. In this section, we're going to talk about natural stream engineers or how plants and animals shape streams. Ecosystem engineers are organisms that modify, maintain, or create habitats. The diagram on this slide shows the relationship between an ecosystem engineer and the subsequent changes that it causes in the environment. If we start with the engineer over here on the left, you can see that it causes some structural change in the physical habitat that leads to an altered abiotic or non-living state, which then leads to either a positive or a negative influence on the biology or the species living in the ecosystem. That biotic change then influences or feeds back to influence the ecosystem engineer itself, and that can happen through a variety of mechanisms. A couple of those are listed here, including predation and competition. A large number of ecosystem engineers exist. Classic examples of engineers include earthworms that cycle soil material and alter nutrient states and moisture. Rodents that create burrows can make the soil more porous and change soil moisture conditions. Bison traveling in large herds can trample sediment and alter ground conditions. And jellyfish aggregations create currents around their bodies that alter ocean water mixing similarly to wind and tide forcing. This picture is taken from a lab experiment where the researchers used green dye to illustrate how current patterns change around jellyfish bodies. Rivers also have important ecosystem engineers. Vegetation is one of the major engineers in rivers and streams. Woody debris falling into a stream can alter water flow and sediment erosion. Vegetation growing in the river channel itself can stabilize the river bed and stabilize river banks. And vegetation growing in the water can slow down the flow and create these ponded up or pooled areas. When woody debris piles up, it can alter not only water flow, but also the accumulation of sediment and the formation of islands in large rivers. Researchers have shown that some river islands start when a piece of woody debris or a tree trunk floating downstream gets stuck and starts to slow down the flow around it, which leads to accumulation or buildup of sediment that ultimately over time can form a large island where other vegetation can colonize and grow. Beavers are probably the most widely recognized animal ecosystem engineer in rivers. Beavers use their teeth to cut down trees and limbs and, and build those um, pieces of wood into a dam structure. That dam can slow down flow and also create large, deep, and cool pools that the beaver uses to store food for times later in the year. And that food store is shown here in this diagram. Beaver activity can alter the shape of a river channel allowing a relatively straight and narrow channel that's incised, which just means that it's relatively deep with banks that are really high, to instead become shallower and start to meander or wind across the landscape, connecting the river channel to its floodplain and to groundwater, which alters sediment sizes and creates variation in flow conditions or water temperature, that allows vegetation to colonize and multiply and create an ecosystem that's thriving. Other organisms can affect the riverbed or the physical habitat of the riverbed. Fish are a good example. So here's an example with fall fish, which create rock or stone nests that are also called reds. <clears throat> by doing this, they alter the topography of the riverbed by creating these large mound structures. This activity also loosens the matrix of the rocks and potentially makes it more easy um, or easily eroded during the next flood. Crayfish also move rocks around with their claws. These pictures are from an experiment taken from above um, in Pennsylvania where the river 
has high fine sediment pollution. The pictures shown here are taken on day one of the experiment for control treatments shown in the top picture. These do not have crayfish and we're going to compare fine sediment accumulation in the control to cages that did have crayfish present. And what you can see is that two weeks later, 14 days later, a large amount of fine sediment built up in the controls compared to the crayfish cages. And we attribute that to the activity of the crayfish, which are using their claws to move those gravels around. And by doing so, they're moving all that fine sediment up out of the riverbed into the water column, and it's then transported downstream. Even smaller still are insects in rivers that are ecosystem engineers. Caddisflies in the family Hydrocycidae are filter feeders, and they build silk webs under the water that they use to pull food out of the water column. That silk structure is shown here in this picture and in these spaces between gravels in this riverbed that's been dried out. Researchers have shown that the silk can actually bind gravels together and make it more stable or less likely to erode during a flood. We measure this with a variable we call critical shear stress in Pascals. And what this variable means is that the higher the shear stress, the more force you need to get rocks to move. So it's harder to erode rocks where the critical shear stress is higher. You can see from this graph that riverbeds with caddisflies and their silk present have a higher critical shear stress compared to controls with no caddisflies, suggesting that these caddisfly silk structures lead to a physical change in the habitat conditions. So why care about these physical and ecological links or the way that the biology living in the river influences the physical habitat? By thinking about how the physical and ecological conditions of the river influence one another, we can think about or better understand how water moves through the river ecosystem and potentially be able to better predict floods. We can also think about how sediment is moving through the system and potentially be able to better predict erosion regimes or be able to predict fine sediment accumulation or buildup. And this becomes really important because we know that what's happening to the river channel and the river bed is providing or um, creating habitat for other species and this becomes especially important when those are species of concern or species that are